to bring you another fun art lesson inspired by the great artist, the French artist and painter Paul Cezanne. Can you say Paul Cezanne? He was a wonderful painter back in the 1800s. And do you know one of the things that Paul Cezanne liked to paint? Fruit, yes. And do you know what it was called? When he painted a bowl of fruit or apples or oranges or pears, and they were arranged on the table, it is called a still life. Can you say still life? So today we are gonna get our own bowl of fruit, but we're gonna really focus in our apples. I love apples. Do you love apples? They say an apple a day keeps the doctor away because they're super healthy. So apples are like people. They come in all shapes and sizes. They come in all colors. Some of them are red. Some of them are green. Some of them have a little mega mix going on. Yellow, orange, red. And they look a little corally. Okay, so we're going to grab some apples. Hopefully you have some in your refrigerator or on your fruit basket on, in your kitchen. But if you don't, we can use our imagination. And Mrs. Talbot's going to walk with you step by step. So, who are we studying? This French painter, Paul Cezanne. Cezanne, yes. That sounds Italian. Paul Cezanne. I'm going to sound more French. Paul Cezanne. Okay, and what did he specialize? What did he love to paint? Still life. Still life. Now, what is a still life, you might ask? Well, it's still. It's an object that doesn't move. Now, I'm not an object. I'm a person. So when we say an object, like a piece of fruit, like, I don't know, a cup or a glass, something that is not a human being. A human being would be a portrait, right? If we painted the land, the mountains of the sea, a landscape, right? Or a cityscape. Um, but today we are not doing portraits. We are not doing cityscapes or landscapes. We are doing a still life doesn't move we're not moving now what's great about this sometimes Paul Cezanne who do you I don't know if you know this about Paul Cezanne but his father did not get a banker as a father and he did not want him to be an artist and Paul Cezanne wanted to be an artist so bad that he kept applying to art school and nobody would take him and then do you know that Paul Cezanne used to paint with a palette knife until one of his good artist friends said hey pick up a brush and then Paul Cezanne loved um, still life so much that sometimes he would paint and paint and paint until the fruit would rot that's a long time in painting because it takes a long time for a fruit to kind of shrivel up anyway guess what else he loved the shapes he loved working with all the shapes and laying down the fruit everywhere um, loved the colors the rich vibrant vibrant colors and mixing them and coming up with all color combinations so that's what we're gonna do today we are going to take our magic tools and we are going to create I'm gonna show you how to do two different still life drawings still life pictures from fruit apples okay so we're gonna choose a yellow apple a kind of an orangey red apple and then a yellow green apple and then you're gonna decide you know how to put the apples on your special table so you're gonna pick a pattern and a background so this is the background like the wall if we were to sit this on um, a table what will be the wallpaper behind it or the painting behind it and then I'm going to show you right now some of Paul's, the picture of Paul Cezanne and some of his greatest work for you to be inspired by, right? So I want you to see all the really cool colors, okay? Then, so this was done with oil pastels and this was done with oil pastel black uh, crayon, like an oil pastel crayon and watercolor. So you can do both or you can choose just one have fun so check out everything in the link I have your template if you want to trace um, or if you want to follow along let's take this adventure together Woo! 
Let's go, artists. Oh, I forgot one thing. We got to do our mantra. We got to get in the big state. Take a deep inhaling breath in. <sighs> Wiggle your fingers. Artists, wake them up. Wake up, fingers. It's time to create. Okay, you ready? I, I am positive. Say it. I am positive. I am creative. I am creative. I am mindful. I am mindful. That means I am very conscious and aware in this moment. I am amazing. I am amazing. And I am an artist. Uh, I am an artist. Bam. All right. Let's do this. Okay, artist. So here we go. We are going to create one or two. You're going to pick if you want to do the oil pastel still life or so here's some examples of oil pastels. Okay. Or if you want to do the oil pastel with watercolor so we can use paint or oil pastel or any combination um this is more of like a mixed media so we use just the black oil pastel crayon you can also just do a black sharpie uh to kind of create a resist for the watercolor so let's go ahead and get started what you're going to need for this project you're going to need a piece of paper and i'm using mixed media paper so it's a little heavier for the watercolor i'm going to use a watercolor paper you're also going to need a pencil an eraser oil pastels or a black sharpie and maybe if you're going to do the watercolor watercolor so it's totally up to you what you want to do now the other optional item that you have is in the link below in the comments or yes below i also have a template that you can use to make your apples now i'm going to show you how to make your own custom apples uh, so that they are um, unique to you. I don't want it to look too like cookie cutter, but if you would like it, you can. And then what you're gonna do is just cut out your template and then you know, put it onto something a little stiffer and then you'll be able to trace around each apple if you would like, okay? So let's go ahead and get started. We're gonna first talk about um, the composition the composition of your page. Now, I wanna write that down. I want you to, well, not just write it down in your head, I guess. A composition is how we want to arrange the apples. Now, I've got my trusty bowl of apples here. These are fake apples, but these are real apples that I got from my refrigerator. They're kind of like, I don't know. They, you see all the colors in them? They're yellow and orange and red. These are green. There's a pear in there, hold on. This one's like not so good. It's, I'm not gonna draw that one. But I want you to look at these amazing apples and apples come in yellow and oranges and reds and lots of really cool bright greens. And that's why Cezanne loved painting the apples. So I'm gonna use my inspiration piece over here. I'm gonna grab three of them here. Okay, so I've got a red apple. It's completely red. This is a fake apple, okay? Do not eat wax apples. I've got my fake green apple, and then I've got my um, one that I've got from my refrigerator, and it's kind of like orangey. I'm gonna, I'm gonna look for like an orangey yellow apple, okay? So those that's the color I'm gonna look at. And then I wanna think about the composition. And again, the composition is how I want to arrange my still life. Um, usually it's on a table. Today, we are gonna put ours on a table and we're gonna have it, we're not gonna put a plate on it, but we're gonna do it in groups of three. So we're gonna have three friends, apples hanging out together. And so here's what you're going to do. You're going to first start with your, take your pencil and I'm gonna show you step by step, but we are going to, whether you're, if you're tracing your apple, make sure you just do it, uh oh, hold on with pencil. Make sure you're doing it with pencil because we're gonna have to erase the lines where the apples are overlapping each other, right? So if I put, I'm gonna always start with my middle and work my way out uh, so far I can have balance, but I'm gonna start with my apple and then I'm gonna overlap one this way and overlap one this way. So they're kind of tilted to the side. 
So the reason that you want to do pencil is when you're doing your apple, you can erase the lines that overlap each other, right? So I can erase all of these lines and it'll look like that, okay? So let's go ahead and start with that. We're gonna start with drawing our apples. And if you would like, we're just gonna do free flow. So what does that mean? So I'm gonna go ahead and look at my first apple and I guess I want my first apple to be green. Yes, I want my green apple in the middle. This is kind of big, but let's go for it. So in my paper, I'm gonna sketch, and the difference between sketching and drawing, if I'm drawing and I'm pressing hard on my paper, it's really hard for me to erase that. So because this is just a guideline of where I want my apples, I'm gonna use the side of my pencil in a very light little touch, a little feather, so light as a feather, you can bar barely see them probably, but I'm barely touching my paper. So let's go ahead and start there. I'm gonna start in the middle of my paper. And if I'm looking at my, I'm observing, this is observational drawing, which means I'm looking with my eyes at the object. And it's a still life because it's not moving. So if I look at my object and I go, hmm, the green apple, is it a perfect circle? No, but I can start putting a circle down. I can start putting a circle down. It's not a perfect circle. It kind of goes down in the middle. It kind of goes down and it comes up almost like a heart, right? And it has a few bumps and lumps like a, it's got a little bulges over here like Mrs. Talbert over here. Let me see. Okay, so I've got my little lump and I'm just sketching. I'm just sketching. And then it comes and it's like, oh, okay. Boom, all right? So I could just do a circle. You could do a circle too, but I was getting fancy with it. Okay, so each piece of fruit, each flower, each snowflake, every piece of art is an original. It's all different, okay. Now I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna do my yellowish apple. I'm not gonna turn it on this side because I wanna have a red apple, a green apple, and a yellowish apple. And notice it has yellows and oranges and corals and all these really cool colors. So this time I'm going to overlap it, right? I'm going to overlap and that's really key. So I could ask, I could, I'm gonna do the stems in a minute. So I'm gonna have it going eh, it's got a little a, a tilt to it. So I'm gonna overlap it and I'm gonna pretend, okay, here's where the top, my little top hat is gonna start. And I'm gonna make it a pretty big, luscious, juicy apple. Oh, I love apples. They say an apple a day keeps the doctor away. That means that you gotta eat healthy, right? So again, I'm gonna bring it overlapping. So I've got one circle, two circles, and I'm going to, and notice all the sketching I'm doing. Oh my goodness, a lot of sketching. Okay, then this one, I'm gonna have it laying down on its side. I'm gonna have it like completely taking a nap and I'm gonna move it. This is called the background, but I'm gonna move it into the front, which is the foreground. So here we go. I'm gonna just do my overlapping apple. Just gonna make the circle, woo -hoo. Circle, and remember, light little touches. And then I'm gonna add all the lumps and bumps, okay? So for this one, I'm gonna come here and I'm going to fatten her up and skinny her out. And again, it's like a big old heart almost. This one, I'm gonna go ahead and go, okay, I like that. And then again, the apple, if you look at the apple, it's fat and then it gets skinny. Okay, now I'm gonna take my eraser and I'm gonna erase the lines that I don't want. You don't have to do all this. You could just draw three circles and call it a day. But I want to show you See how I'm erasing the lines that overlap? Okay, 
and you won't be able to see any of this. Now I'm drawing mine kind of hard so that you can actually see what I'm doing through the camera, okay? But, okay, see these are my guidelines. Now what I'm gonna do is put like a little U in here and well, I'll do that in a minute, but this is where they're going to, where the stem or the top hat of the apple is gonna come out. Now, if you want to add leaves to your apple, you totally can, all right? So you might wanna add a leaf or two, I don't know. Okay, see in this one, I didn't do a leaf. I didn't do a leaf, I just did stems. They just have little top hats growing off of them. So it's totally up to you. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we've got our three amigos, that means friends. We got our three friends or amigas. And so we've drawn our center apple, our overlapping apple, another sideways apple. And now what we're going to do is we are going to put a horizontal line and that's gonna represent where our table is going. It's gonna separate our background, like where the, you know, the wall is, and we're gonna put a, a table. And what I call a table, you don't need a ruler or anything. I'm gonna go straight through the center of my apples. Like, I call a horizontal line like this, my excuse me line. Like, excuse me, coming through, coming through, and it's gonna come right out the other side, okay? So it's gonna go right across. So it's invisible in the background, okay? So we've got our table and we've got our wall. So step one, draw apples very lightly and we're sketching, we're sketching. We overlap, we um, take away the, erase all the little overlapping lines and then we put our horizontal line going, excuse me, excuse me, coming through. Now what we get to do is we are gonna add our um, outline. Okay, so we're gonna make it pop. Now it's gonna get a little messy, but you know what they say, creativity is messy and I am very creative. So in this instance, we can use either a black Sharpie or we can use a black oil pastel. I'm, or you can use a crayon, either way, okay? But it might get a little smudgy, all is well. And it looks very artsy fartsy when you do a, a little smudgy wudgy. So what we're going to do is we are going to take, oh, so yeah, you, you definitely are gonna take your black um, oil pastel and you are going to start outlining what you drew. So I'm gonna just go ahead and outlining a nice line. And again, I don't want it to look too perfect. I want it to look like a real apple so I'm gonna make it a little like wobbly. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Okay. All right, now I'm gonna put in my table, my, excuse me, coming through that, the, the line, the horizontal line. Then I'm gonna put in some little U's. These are little U's that where my little top hat is gonna come out, so my stem. I'm gonna put a little stem, boop. And like I said, if you wanna put a um, a leaf on there, you totally can. I'm gonna put a leaf, well, no, I'm not gonna put a leaf. Okay, I changed my mind. So let me erase this little leaf here. Boom, boom, boom. Boom, boom, boom. Okay, yay. Like I said, it's gonna start smudging. It's all good. Especially if you wipe, so don't wipe if you can at all possibly not wipe. Okay. Right. Okay, that's okay. I'm gonna pick a background color. Now, anytime you get any, like if you're using chalk pastel or, or regular pastels and they start to get that little crumbly wumbly, instead of blowing, just tap it, okay? So now let's put our color. Now the first color is my base color and or my, what I call my, my mid-tone, okay? So what I wanna use is I wanna use just like, if I'm gonna start with the, the, the middle one, I'm gonna use a medium green. Now I wanna, Paul Cezanne, he loved to use bright, vivid colors. And so in each apple, I'm gonna use a light color, a medium value color, and a dark color. 
So for my green, if I looked at my green apple and I looked and I squinted my eyes and fuzzied out, fuzzied out my eyes, I would see that the lightest color is like this light yellow color. It's like my highlight color. And the highlight is the lightest color in an object and it's from the light. So whether that's a light in the room, like a light bulb or the sun outside shining down upon the head of the apple. Um, if you notice here, you'll see a light point. That's called a highlight. And so for this exercise, I'm going to pretend that the highlight is coming from this end, from it's shining down. So all of my highlights are going to be on this side of my apple. Okay. So they're all going to be over here. And it's okay if it gets all smudgy wedged. All right. So those are going to be my highlights. So let's start with the, the green apple. Out of my three tones, I'm going to use my medium green. My medium green. And I'm just going to use my craftsmanship and the side. You don't have to use it. You can use the, if you're just like, oh, I want to get in there. You can use that too. But I'm going to use my side. And I'm gonna start coloring in my green apple. Now, what I'm gonna do is this cool technique where, I, and I'm kind of doing it a little stripey. And I actually like that it's getting in a little black in there too. So it's all good. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start layering in my colors. When it comes to the corners though, I'm gonna be a little bit careful not to add too much black, okay? Because when I start layering, meaning color on top of color, color on top of color, it's going to give it this really cool effect. So I put down my base tone and now I'm going to come over here where the highlighting is and I'm going to press down really hard, really hard. And notice what's happening. It's actually lifting up the bottom color and it's blending really, really well. And they are playing so nicely, right? So I'm gonna add just a little yellow, but most of the yellow, if I just keep going over and over and over and over that same area, do you see how it lifts the color and it blends the color? So I did that one, yay. Now what I'm gonna do is down here, if this is the highlight where the light's coming, if I look down at my apple, guess what? There's darkness underneath it. That's where the shadow is hanging out. So I'm gonna come in with my dark green and I'm just gonna kinda put some dark green right where the other apple meets the apple and at the bottom. I'm gonna put this dark green and I'm just gonna feather it in, feather it in on top of that green. And you know what's cool? I could actually use my finger to smudge. The other thing that I can do, but I'm not going to do, but I just wanted to tell you you could do it, is you can take a Q-tip and some like baby oil. You'd have to have the right paper though, and you can blend those and they would be like, ooh, hey, party over here, we are happy. So it would blend it all together. But if you look at the painter, um, Paul Cezanne's work, it's very, you'll see these like in, intense colors and they're like choppy, 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 choppy. And some strokes are this way, some strokes are this way. And it's like, ah. So it doesn't have to be the same way, but I'm liking that. So tap, tap, tap. Now I am going to do a Hmm, yellow apple on this side. So again, I've got my highlight color here. I know I'm gonna do it there, but what is my mid-tone? My mid-tone for my red apple, believe it or not, is gonna be orange. I'm gonna use like a red, orange, yellow, and let me see. I was hoping I had a purple oil pastel, but alas, I do not. If I had a little purple, I could put it in too to darken that red. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna start with my orange. So I'm gonna go ahead and use the side. And I'm gonna go right over this. I'm just going very gently and carefully, scratchy watchy. I'm just scratching in. I'm being kind of careful around this stem here. Just 
trying not to get the edge too much black. If, an, if black gets in there, I'm totally cool with it because it looks super artsy and I like that because I'm an artsy kind of girl. And then what I'm gonna do, remember mid-tone first and I'm gonna come back over with my light tone, which happens to be yellow and the light is casting its highlight on this side and it's also cool that it's got a little green in there because if you looked at this apple you'll see that you'll see little little moments of green and moments of yellow and orange and all the fabulous natural colors but whatever color i don't want you can peel this back and you know it's it's kind of waxy so i can come back over and make it a different color. I can blend it on out, okay? So I'm gonna come over here and I'm just gonna go for it, okay? So I'm putting most of my yellow here, yay! Okay, then I'm gonna come back over with some more orange, woo, thread it throughout. But the star of the show is my red. Now you see this, how it's got black on it? Take another piece of paper and Try to get that um, off before you put it on because see what happens? It'll be all black. So this is from a previous picture I did. So I wanna kinda wiggle off and scrubby dub dub and make sure I have a nice pure red, okay? All right, so now I'm gonna come down here and because this is going to be my, no, this is my yellow. Is this my yellow apple? I forgot what I said I was gonna do. I think this is gonna be my red apple, sorry, because I, I was talking. So I'm gonna make this my red apple and I'm gonna put the darkest color on the side where the shadow is. Dun, 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 the shadow of my apple. Oh, do you remember Snow White? This is a good apple though. This apple, when you eat it, it's gonna make you feel like a gazillion trillion dollars, honey. Okay. So, I'm threading in my red delicious, delicious apple, darling. Oh, you eat this apple and you are going to have bounds of boundless energy. All right, I'm liking that, I'm liking that. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and overlap my colors again and I'm going to scrubby dub dub yellow on top. Yay, oh, so happy. And I'm gonna oh, put a little highlight point, look at that. Look how it's coming up, you see that? So cool. And then I can go back over with red. I can go back over with, with all kind of colors. And you know what I'm gonna do? I'm just gonna get a little, and I'm gonna add just a little bit, since I don't have purple, just a little bit of black. Very little, very little. Okay, now, tap, tap, tap. All right, my last apple here before we get to the background is gonna be yellow. And like I said, I need to kind of peel my, my little tools here. Let me grab another one. So I get very passionate and then I start breaking my oil pastels. So contain your passion. No, don't do it, don't do it. Okay, so I'm erasing my little smudgy wudgies as many as I can. All right, tap, tap, tap. Okay, so this is gonna be my yellowish apple. So I've got my green, I've got my red, and now I'm gonna do my, hey, I'm taking a nap. Time out, baby. Okay, so I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna put, since the light is coming this way, my yellow, 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 yellow. Let's put some yellow and let's be mellow. All right, I'm excited. So I've got my yellow apple. Iron. Okay. Nye, 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 nye. Okay, I got my yellow apple. I'm happy. That's my base tone, right? But now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just kinda stroke in some orange. I'm just gonna stroke it in. Just, just stroke it in uh, ever so gently. Because again, I want this to be more yellow than anything. Okay? 
And I'm gonna go in the direction. You don't have to. You don't have to. You could be like Paul Cezanne. And you'd be like, nah, nah, nah. go any which way you want to. All right, so the highlights come in here. And what's our, what's our rule? Hey, scrub it out. We're now going to blend and scrub. So I'm gonna go back over this orange, throw in my highlights, and I might put some yellow here. And I'll, oh, look at my colors starting to play together. They like each other so much. Oh, yes, they do. And then on the bottom here, I'm going to add that shadow with my orange just on the bottom. And that's going to be my little shadow, right? Okay, maybe here too, hanging out in the crevice in the little nooks and crannies. Okay, I'm digging that. I'm digging it. Okay, so I've got my apples. Now, if I wanted to just take it up a whole nother level, I could take my white and add a little, little dot and a little dot just for an extra highlight. You don't have to, but that's like if I just wanted to get fancy with it, okay? So those are my three apples. Goodbye, apples. So now, tap, tap, tap. All right, we might have to get them out that. Okay, now what we're gonna do is create our background. Now our background, you could actually um, paint it with watercolor if you wanted to, or you could put, um, you know, like I did, the oil pastels, okay? So you wanna think of a pattern if you can, just to add some interest, and you can do a variety of different patterns, and you wanna kinda of think of colors that if you have them, I have a just a small oil pastel set, but maybe if you have a more, a, a bigger pastel set, you could do like pinks or purples, something that are not apple colors. And I want you to notice, do you see all of the little green flecks and yellow flecks, and you see how delicious this looks? This looks like, yes! I doesn't it look artsy? It looks super artsy. Okay, I mean, think about it. Look at a real piece of fruit. You see all those little flecks? You could even put little spots and speckles on there if you want to. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is, I think I'm gonna do something kind of cool and different. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a blue because that's not an apple color, right? So I'm gonna do um, just some really cool zigzag lines in the back, you could do whatever you want. See, on this one I did triangles, on this one I did stripes, and I did zigzags here. So you can, on the watercolor that we're about to do, I just did diagonal. So now it's time to get creative. So I'm gonna do, just, just for time purposes, a zigzag line. And then you can make it thicker, right? So we have used, what elements of art? We've used line, we use shape, and we've also used form, right? We took it from a two-dimensional to a three-dimensional, and we have used, uh-oh, this diagonal kind of got wonky. We also used color. We also used, that. well, we used value, right? <laughs> okay, so I've got my um, zigzag, and this is where I would fill this in. So you would just take the time to fill this in, thicken it up like so, okay? And I think what I'm gonna do is not do that in front of, like we're, we're gonna keep it going and then you can just thicken up each line. But then now you wanna think about your table. So we've got our background right and for our table which is in the front and it's called the foreground we're gonna go ahead and again you're gonna use your eraser to get rid of all these little smudges at the end but I think I'm gonna do I think I'm gonna do like a, a green the green would be kind of cool right so for this one I think I'm just gonna do like a plain green okay I'm just gonna go ahead and fill in my plain green 
and then maybe I'll do a pattern on top of this. So again, this is where you exercise your creativity or maybe you use your baby oil and smudgy wudgy. It's gonna be amazing, I know. I cannot wait to see. And I'm going in the same direction. So whether you're using crayons or colored pencils, whatever um, you are using to, to color your picture with, you know, just get creative. If you look at the pictures of Paul Cezanne's, I mean, his backgrounds were so cool. Like he would take, well, I won't do it because then it'll um, mix with the apples, but just notice all the colors that he would use, not just in the still life, but in the backgrounds. So then I can come back over and maybe I do dots. Maybe it's on a polka dot, you know, table, right? I would always suggest that you do the, uh, the wall or the background first because if you don't and you come back over, you'll smear a lot. Like Mrs. Talbert, do not do that. So again, whether you're using stripes or zigzags or triangles, try to create a pattern um, that you like, right? And the star of the show though is definitely the apples. Now check this out. Remember how I put the black right here? I can come back in with my red if I wanted to make it a little lighter and look at that. It creates a dark red. Isn't that cool? Yes. So cool. All right. I like it. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and finish this blue uh, later. And then we will come back and I'm going to show you now how to create your watercolor. So let's do that now. Okay. This one I love. I love. I love. I love. Well, I love all of them, but let's go ahead and get some watercolor paper. I'm going to grab a heavier, um, a heavier paper. This is my watercolor paper. And you should clean your hands so that doesn't happen. So let me flip it over. Okay. All right. I'm going to take my watercolor paper and here's how we're going to create our apples. Are you ready? This is going to be so cool and easy and it's so super fast. So first thing we're going to do is create our apples. So we're going to do our three circles. So I'm going to do one and again, you can make them lumpy or you can just make them, um, you know, like a circle. Okay, two, three, meow. Okay, there are three amigos. Now let's go ahead and put our U, U, U. That's where our little top hat's gonna come, our stem. So let's create a stem one, and this one's gonna look, lean this way, two, and this one's gonna lean that way, three, yay. Now let's put a plate. Your plate can be any shape you want. It can be oval or round or square. I'm going to do kind of an oval shape now. So I'm going to put these apples on a plate. That's kind of a wonky plate, isn't it? <laughs> That's okay. It's unique to me. And then I'm going to go ahead and put a striped background. So I'm just gonna put my, excuse me, coming through lines, kind of spaced apart here, okay? So, and maybe I'll put a line here too. Perfect, great. So I've got my oil pastels. If you didn't wanna use that, you could also use your, um, your black Sharpie. That'll do the same thing. Now I'm gonna grab my water with my paintbrush and then I'm gonna grab my watercolors okay you could also use washable markers and with the washable markers you just put a little water to them and they kind of act like um, watercolors you could also use um, watercolor uh, what is it called colored pencils okay so I've got my water and I'm gonna wake up my colors now I'm gonna start with my dark colors. I'm gonna start with my dark colors. So I'm gonna wake up, uh, let's see, 
I think I'm gonna do green first. So I'm gonna roll my brush into the green and I'm gonna put my little shadow in here. I'm gonna say like a little C. It's like, yay, right on the edge. Let's move that little sucker out of the way. So I'm gonna put my C here, okay? Then what I'm gonna do is rinse out my, my brush really well and I'm gonna do my red apple now. I'm gonna roll it into red, make sure all that green's off. And I'm gonna say, okay, here's my bottom of my red apple and I'm gonna put my nice C here at the bottom and swoop up. Bottom and swoop it on up, rinsey, rinsey. Then I'm gonna do my yellow apple, my yellow orangey apple. And again, I'm going to go ahead and put my dark color right where I think the shadow is gonna be, which is right here. I didn't mean to do it over there. Boom. All right, and I could put a little here too. And a little here, yay, rinsey, rinsey. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab my yellow. Woo, there we go. And I'm gonna do, put lots of water on here and make sure it's nice and zhuzhed up. And I'm just gonna come over here and let's play. Let's play. I'm gonna say, hey, you wanna hang out here? Let's be friends. And do you see how it's like, oh, okay. We could blend, here we go. I'm excited. I like black crayon or the oil pastels getting on there. And I like that because it looks like little real specks of that apple but I can get that later. So I'm blending in the colors. Rinsey, rinsey. So I'm gonna grab yellow again, grab it, grab it. And I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna go, hey. And I'm gonna wake it up and look what's happening. It's blending out. Perfect. I'm gonna grab yellow again. Hey, come over here. Let's go on this side. Yeah. And again, zhuzhy wuzhy. And look at there, all my colors are playing so nicely together. Now I'm gonna let that sit for a while and I'm gonna grab another color that's a non-apple color. And maybe that non-apple color is gonna be a pad or violet. Same thing, fancy color. So I'm gonna wake up my purple and very carefully, I'm going to put it on my Willy Wonka plate. It's a very unique plate your teacher did. Again, I am just going there around my apples. Around my apples. And then what we're gonna do is do our background. So zhuzh it up. And you see how that oil pastel kind of resist the, the, the watercolor? Right, so it, it almost holds it like a, a little cage. It's like a little, stop, do not come in on this side. Okay, so that's helpful. Now, if you had a black Sharpie, you could just paint right on top of that and it would not move. That black outline would help you make your apples pop off the page, which is super cool. So I'm just, Going over my apples, I mean, uh, around my apples onto the plate. And zhuzhi zhuzhi. Okay, and if I wanted to make it darker, I could just come back over, roly poly, and let it dry a little bit and add more color. Okay, so. We're good on that. Now, let's do our background, shall we? You know what I'm gonna do? I think a little green got on my apple, I mean purple. So I'm like, get out of here, wait a minute. Okay, I don't mind a little bit, cause that's super cool with it, a little bit, but. So I just went back over with yellow, and that looks really good. All right, this looks kind of like a pear. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take my blue, and I'm gonna do, a striped background, zhuzhi zhuzhi. So now it's your turn. It's your turn to create your masterpiece. Are you gonna do, you know what? Are you gonna do both of them? 
Are you gonna do one? Which style are you gonna do? All of the oil pastels, the watercolor, or a mega mix? It's time to get creative, artists. I cannot wait to see what you do. Make sure you attach it to um, Seesaw or Google Classroom or send me an email or carrier pigeon. Do you even know what a carrier pigeon is? I don't know. All right, ladies and gentlemen, artists and creative human beings, go forward and create Fairy Godmother out. Okay, and there is our finished uh, Paul Cezanne inspired still life apple um, wonderful picture. So I hope you guys had fun. Yay, we did it. We completed our Cezanne inspired still life with our delicious apples. Yes. Oh, it's going to make me want to eat apples every day. Maybe we make apple pie or apple crisp. I don't know. But we did a great job. All right. So this was the all the oil pastels. Remember, I can't wait to see what patterns you pick out. Uh, this one, we have this one with stripes and zigzags. And again, notice all those details. And then we have this one. How are you going to overlay your apples? How are you going to make them dance together? They're striking a pose. I love it. That is our composition, how you are going to lay it out on the page. Are you going to just do the oil pastels or are you going to also do our oil pastels or you can use a black Sharpie and watercolor? So this is a kind of cool deal Like you can do both or you can do one of the other. But until we meet again, oh, let me bring out my French. Okay, okay, here we go. We said bonjour, it was hello. So au revoir, au revoir, au revoir, au revoir. 
Goodbye, artist. <laughs>